Hello, my name is Cecilia Sun and I teach musicology and piano here at the Conservatorium of Music at UWA. In this video, I'll give you an overview of the Shirelles' Will You Love Me Tomorrow, one of your ATAR set works. I'll tell you about what was happening in American popular music around 1960, the year the Shirelles recorded this song, and I'll talk about girl groups, which were very popular at this time, and the ways in which this group and this song typifies the genre. The Shirelles' Will You Love Me Tomorrow holds a special place in the history of popular music. When it made it all the way to number one on Billboard's Hot 100 chart in 1960, it marked the first time that position was held by an all-African-American girl group. This success came at a time in popular music history when the first wave of rock and roll, which had become huge by the mid-1950s, had come to an abrupt end for reasons not entirely musical. In 1958, Little Richard quit music to preach, Elvis was drafted into the army, and Jerry Lee Lewis's marriage to his 13-year-old cousin created enough scandal to put a dent in his career. In the next year, in 1959, Chuck Berry was arrested and jailed for violating the Mann Act for, quote, transporting an underage woman across state line for immoral purposes, end quote. And Buddy Holly died in a plane crash along with Big Bopper and Richie Valance. Into this vacuum came teen idols such as Frankie Avalon, the beginnings of the phenomenal success of Motown records and girl groups. Between them, they would dominate the U.S. charts until early 1964, when the arrival of the Beatles in the U.S. changed popular music history. Musicologist Jacqueline Warwick, in her book Girl Groups, Girl Culture, identified the key characteristics of girl groups as the following. They sing about topics important to teenage girls. They often sing in voices that are not overly trained or virtuosic. They sing songs largely composed by professional songwriters. They sing to accompaniments that were often orchestral, featuring professional session musicians. They were often made up of close friends and or relatives. The groups often divide into a lead singer who is accompanied by her backup vocals. And most of the songs were written for studio recordings and later playback on the radio rather than for live performances. Note that solo artists such as Leslie Gore and Little Eva are considered a part of the girl group genre because these characteristics in their music apply to them even though they are, of course, technically not groups. In many ways, the Shirelles were the quintessential girl group. They started as a 17-year-old vocal quartet from Passaic, New Jersey. You can see the group in this picture from around 1965. There were best friends who sang for local dances and talent shows. They auditioned for their friend's mother, Florence Greenberg, who was one of the very few women to own her own recording company. Greenberg liked what she heard and signed them to her tiara and later scepter labels. Going against type, the Shirelles actually collectively wrote their first single, I Met Him on a Sunday, which got to number 49 on the charts in 1958. Will You Love Me Tomorrow is more typical in that it was composed by professional songwriters. In this case, the important and prolific duet of Carole King, who wrote the music, and Jerry Goffin, who wrote the lyrics. In 1971, King would record her own very different version of the song for her album Tapestry, and many other cover versions exist. In 1960, King was working with Goffin in the famed Brill Building in New York City. It was a one-stop shop for all your musical needs. You could get a publisher, a printer, you could cut a demo, you could find someone to promote your record, you could cut a deal with radio promoters, all in one building. It is best known today for being a songwriting factory. King later records an extremely high-pressure atmosphere where there was competition amongst the songwriters to produce the next, next hit in very quick time. King herself was only 18 when she wrote Will You Love Me Tomorrow, a year younger than the Shirelles. As I mentioned earlier, one of the defining characteristics of girl group music is their lyrical content. Importantly, for the first time, teenage girls could turn on the radio and hear other teenage girls and young women sing about topics that mattered to them. 
Will you love me tomorrow is about the all important question of whether it's a good idea to sleep with your boyfriend and fearing what the consequences of that action might be if you do. As the song asks, if you were to have sex with him tonight, will my heart be broken and will you love me tomorrow? Cultural critic Susan Douglas, who wrote a chapter called Why the Shirelles Matter, argued that the importance of this song is that even though it takes a traditional topic like female love, it presents it from that of the female singer. This song is about her longing and desire, and most crucially, it is about her choice whether to have sex or not. The song ends with the important question repeated, leaving the outcome indeterminate. Will You Love Me Tomorrow came out in 1960, the year in which the Federal Drug Agency in the US authorized the birth control pill for the first time. It would not have been available to the Shirelles as unmarried young women or many of their teenage fans. Only married women, with the approval of their husbands, had access to the pill. But it is significant that a song like this hit the charts when reproductive freedom was becoming a possibility. The structure of Will You Love Me Tomorrow is a straightforward and common for popular song, AABA form, with an introduction and a coda, as you can see here. The A section recurs as the three verses, and the B section, the bridge. The coda takes only the second half of the verse before repeating to fade. I'd like to point out two significant features here. First, the instrumentation. The introduction features a steady snare drum pattern that you can hear in a lot of girl group tunes. In Will You Love Me Tomorrow, it plays a part of the fluttering heartbeat, something that you hear throughout, giving the song an underlying sense of nervousness and excitement in keeping with the topic. The presence of strings and the absence of rock and roll electric guitar is significant here. Douglas makes the point that the string section represents a gentler, more feminine alternative to the sexually charged electric guitar or saxophone and their connotations of aggressive masculinity. Second, the relationship between the four singers. The song begins with Owen singing alone. The other three Shirelles join in with a backup R ah, on Tonight the Light of Love is in Your Eyes, and they sing with her, but will you love me tomorrow in an act of sisterly solidarity? The sense of community formed by this relationship between the four performers is a crucial feature of girl group music and for their fans as well. In the second verse, you'll hear backup singers singing nonsense syllables in accompaniment. The use of these syllables, a form of girl talk, is another common characteristic of this genre. Hits like the Shoop Shoop song even makes a feature of it in their titles. This initially come from vocables found in doo-wop, but within the context of girl groups, it allow these singers to sing about romantic longings that they don't yet have words to articulate. Remember, in 1960, we're still a few years away from the sexual revolution of the later 1960s. Girls still had to tread that fine line between being good versus giving in to desire, between knowing enough boys to get them on the path to marriage, but not appearing in any way overly promiscuous. Taken together, we have, in Will You Love Me Tomorrow, an ordinary girl, heart-pounding, rehearsing questions she knows she should ask while being swept up in desires and feelings she doesn't yet have the words to articulate. I hope this song has helped you in your ATAR studies. Good luck with your exams.